Our first example for considering how to use these criteria will be that of applying the criteria to judging act utilitarianism. And we've gone through some examples. I think, you know, some of the weaknesses, the strengths of act utilitarianism. But let's try to kind of put it all in perspective. Well, let's use the second criteria first. That is, how does act utilitarianism fare with respect to its being consistent with the facts of moral life? And remember, consistency with the facts of moral right life means it's consistent with our experiences about making moral judgments, disagreeing with others on moral issues, you know, that maybe we, mis we have mistakes in our moral beliefs and we'll revise them and being able to give reasons for them. Well, from this perspective, utilitarianism looks pretty good. Right? Utilitarianism assumes we can make moral judgments. It also assumes that we have moral disagreements, right? Because act utilitarianism, remember, is the theory that what makes an action right or wrong, or what makes an action morally right, morally obligatory, is the fact that it has, it results, it has consequences that give the best balance of good over bad, or really ha happiness over unhappiness, or to be precise, pa pleasure over pain. Well, in that case, it certainly assumes that we can make moral judgments, right? We, we, make a ba we, we judge whether things are going to have these, this balance of consequences. We have disagreements about it, about whether things are right or wrong, and sometimes the disagreements amount to disagreements about what the consequences, the uh, pleasurable and painful consequences of the particular action is. We can be mistaken in our moral beliefs, right? We can think that an action is okay only to discover that, well, we thought it had one set of consequences, but it did, had a different set of consequences. And finally, it provides, you know, supporting reasons for our moral judgments. It'll explain, ultimately, why a certain action is right or wrong. And it explains it in terms of the consequences, the, ple the pleasant and painful consequences, and the balancing off of the two, and that if it's a right action, it's the one that has the best consequences of any alternative to that action. So, so far, at least from the, the second criterion, act utilitarianism is pretty good. Well, let's move on and take a look at the third one, resourcefulness in moral problem solving. And let me remind you what resourcefulness was. It was that the theory helps us solve moral problems, identify morally relevant aspects of conduct, you can go back to the page and take a look. Judge the rightness of actions. Resolve conflicts from among moral principles and judgments. Test and correct our moral intuitions. Understand the underlying point of morality. Well, in some of these things, certainly, act utilitarianism does okay. And make sure, if you're a little confused, make sure you understand the distinction between act utilitarianism and rule utilitarianism and what the two different theories say. Because, Okay, so in general, it certainly helps us solve certain moral problems, right? We just have to look at the pleasure and the pain that are consequences of them. It tells us what the morally relevant aspects of conduct are, right? The consequences, the painful and pleasant consequences of the act. Okay, it helps us judge the rightness, and, you know, yes and no, that is, at least, you know, we have a way of judging it. Maybe it's kind of tough to figure out the consequences. It'll help us resolve 
you know, from among moral principles and judgments, right? Because we'll apply the criteria. So, so it does do a lot of this. And then it's, it it's lets us test and correct our moral intuitions and understanding the underlying point of morality, right? It's ultimately happiness, pain over pleasure. So it gives an explanation, but it's a little bit short. So, so far it's looking okay, except it's a little bit short in one thing, in, in its resourcefulness. And I'm not really sure if this is the resourcefulness or this is the next, the, the first criteria. But let's think of this. It really can't explain a certain moral judgment that you know the rightness and wrongness of certain kinds of action that is it doesn't explain the distinction that we talked about between what's just required by morality that is what makes some what something that's morally obligatory and a super erogatory action right that is it can't explain the difference between you know an action that's just right and an action that is permissible but not required but goes well beyond one's moral duty. That is, we talk about, for example, cases where a soldier jumps on a grenade to save his friend's life in the foxhole or in the in the midst of a battle. In that case, we say it's above and beyond his moral duty, that it was a good thing that he did, but it went beyond what's required by morality. It would have been okay if he jumped out of the way just to save his own life, you know, because his life was in jeopardy, maybe risking at the same time not helping his friend because he just didn't have time. That's why we call this a super erogatory act. But act utilitarianism can explain this particular distinction that we make in trying to solve the problem of what the person should do because it looks like according to act utilitarianism that is it's not a nice thing to do to jump on the grenade but since it causes the highest the best balance of pain over pleasure for everybody you're required to jump on the grenade. So it really doesn't help us solve this particular issue that is what we should be doing in cases where we think certain actions are above and beyond the call of duty, but nonetheless good things to do. So it looks like from this criterion, Act utilitarianism comes up a little bit short. One thing I should note, though, is don't think that this is a you know knock a knockdown argument against act utilitarianism. Supporters of the theory think, or they insist, that this is acceptable. They can swallow this consequence of the theory. They say some of our other moral intuitions are just wrong right and it resolves the conflict from among moral principles there just are no super erogatory actions well that's one position you could take or the or the act utilitarian could take that super erogatory actions are morally required so at least from the from principle number three resourcefulness so the usefulness and moral problem solving act utilitarianism comes up at least a little bit weak